Okay, so I wanted to give a review of all this 3D printing stuff that Mr. Stemple has been uh, talking about and sending out uh, to some of us lucky individuals and uh, talk about, uh, I guess, what he's been doing for me specifically. Um, uh, what I've been working on, uh, and I'm sure many of you know, is a 7.5-inch uh, gauge uh, two and a half to a foot scale west side lumber uh, log swing swain log car um, and what we're doing is we're trying to produce parts uh, that can be um, molded into rubber then injected with wax and then that wax can be built into a sprue put into a flask and cast um, in various materials um, and what Peter had asked for when he got his uh, Form Labs uh, Form 1 3D printer, which is a stereo lithography printer, um, you can look it up online, uh, is for people to kind of send him models. And he knew some of us had already had some models that he could use. And so I was able to send him uh, what I had to kind of see what he could do with them. And uh, I cannot say how impressed I am so far. This is some of the best. 3D prints that I've seen to date. Um, and uh, what we've got here is these are some of the washers. We have an elliptical and two different size malleable washers uh, that were used on the car. Um, these were modeled, the round pieces were modeled off of parts in hand. Um, the elliptical was modeled after a uh, historic photograph um, and I'm, I'm able to use parts that I have in hand to scale to get the proper sizing and everything. Over here what we have is a brake shoe assembly. Um, basically you'll see we have a brake rail space here. Um, the support, the shoe, and the pin that holds them together. Um, and these were also modeled off of parts in hand even though the part that I had for this and the pin uh, originally didn't have the shoe in it. We found a separate shoe um, that of course fit into it. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that they all go together. Also, this is not a new shoe. This is actually a used shoe. Um, when you look at the profile on the end, you can definitely see that it's been worn into the wheel, which uh, I'll explain in a little bit how kind of neat it was uh, when we compared that to some of the actual. Um, so some of the things that I've, thought, I've seen with the printing. Um, neat. Really great crisp detail on all the sides that the support tree is not on. Um, the support tree basically creates um, a bunch of dimpled work wherever it has to touch and hold the material because you've got to you can't just print the object floating. It has to be attached to something so it doesn't move as it prints. Um, and the downfall of that is the underside of all these washers and where it connected on the brake shoe parts had uh, you know you lose some fidelity in that um, also you know you get some loss of detail um, with how that support structure is built um, and one of the downfalls is once you separate that um, you need to remove those marks you need to account for that in your 3d modeling to provide just a little extra material so you can file sand or remove that material um, as you make it. But not bad. Um, one of the things that uh, I think Peter has learned and that I've been reading online is that you need to print these at a slight angle. It gives you the best fidelity um, overall and best finish print. Um, one of the things I'm not sure if you can see because the, of the focus in the camera is that these are quite brittle. They're very strong but very brittle. Um, and that I tried cutting this off with a set of shears and I was just slowly working on this side while it sheared this whole side off and it took with the support tree that was underneath this just a little chip out of the washer. Um, so very strong material. Uh, he did give me a set that I don't have right in front of me that were printed dead flat and one of the problems with it is is that the UV reactant resin hadn't fully hardened on the underside um, of the washer and what I did to uh, harden that material is literally just set 
um, the 3D print in the window, and that gave. Uh, you, I left it there for a day, and when I came back, it was all rock hard. Um, so that seemed to solve that issue. Um, really neat seeing the words printed um, on the washers. Um, it's really hard, to, even on any camera, to see that it says malleable on the round washers, and then it says 439 um, on the elliptical here. Um, like I said, the, the fidelity of what's being printed is quite amazing. Uh, for how small these parts are. Um, and now while these aren't HO scale or N scale or even O scale, um, it's still really, really cool. Um, but so these were some of the first parts Peter printed for me. The second set of parts he printed was this brake shoe assembly, um, which to me was really neat because like I said, these parts weren't necessarily together in the in the re, in the real size, they were just parts that interchange. Where we have the wearable brake shoe that you often replace uh, through the life of the car, its support, and then the pin that holds it. And uh, again, you know, you have here they're taken off, and it's a little harder to see. Um, but hopefully, the camera can kind of show you the rough surface. Even though I filed this, uh, this face here was where the support structure was, and uh, once uh, it was filed, it's still a little rough. We'll take some Bondo to it if we end up molding these particular ones um, to fill in any left open open spots and then re-sand it out. Um, one of the other things that I thought was very interesting is, um, and you can kind of see it here, is in the ends of these here and on this side. Yep. Here you can see through to the black background. Um, it created a holiday in the 3D print, um, meaning a void that isn't really there. And uh, when I looked at my model, it wasn't there either. But between transferring from, I'm using SketchUp with the extensions for exporting to the STL or Stereolithic file type um, and a uh, solid inspector to the software Peter is using. Um, somehow those got omitted, um, but very impressive. Uh, I feel kind of bad because this material is expensive. Um, I should have hollowed this and left square holes on either side and left a, a, a thick, a thicker wall, but still thinner than the solid of material um, so that it wasn't all used. And then you can come back and bondo in the ends. Uh, for the molding port purpose, so a little bit on my part. Uh, other than that, took a, just a touch of filing, um, and same with this part. This is the support. Here you can see the brake rail, um, and uh, one of the things I noticed on this one is we had a holiday in the 3D printing um, that was random. It just didn't fill in material here. You can see it's thin. Uh, but there is also supports between this web and this web, and so I need to get in with a little sanding block and sand the inside smooth. Um, again, I need to thicken this web here up because it, right now it's about the same thickness as this um, because that support sprue structure went in here. So I can't file off much more without over thinning this web. Um, also, bond, you know, get in again with Bondo to fix it. Uh, took a little bit of filing. In here, there were a couple of uh, support in the inside of this shoe that needed to be cut out. Um, one of the things I've found works really well for cutting out the small ones, number 11, uh, oops, sorry, exacto blade uh, to get like the onesie twosie supports out. But when you're doing a lot, a little uh, razor, either exacto or xeno. Uh, Saw blade uh, works really well. Um, I apologize for the camera not wanting to focus. These are really hard because they're white parts. Um, but that's why I chose the black background. So this is really cool. Um, basically what you can do is just bring the two parts together, 
took a little filing to make sure that they match just perfectly and that I got the sprue material out of the way and then just slip in the pin that holds it in place just like in the real thing and there you go it works just as advertised um, as in the real thing here you can see the like I said the rail the braking rail that would go between either side of the axle to both brakes and uh, it just fit together very very nicely um, I need to go back and see if there was there I've got a little 16th inch gap top and bottom and I want to make sure that, that was how it really was or if I need to change some of my 3d model to account for that um, but really beautiful and the amazing part was when we threw this on our wheels this existing curve that was burnt into this used pad matched up perfectly and I've got a photo I'll attach at the end um, along with some of my 3d modeling images that this just sat perfectly in and this 3d model and the actual part were not taken and dealt with for about a year after when we manufactured the wheel sets um, which was amazing that it just fit that nicely um, on here uh, without any uh, problems being had so really impressed like I said the only downfall to this uh, style of printing is the support trees um, but outside of that you know the detail everywhere else is really high um, it's amazing how well they fit together um, and uh, you know just right almost right out of there with very little minimal amount of work um, and that you get this quality of uh, a part you know, almost ready for casting uh, hopefully we will take this to um, Bob over at Stevenson Models uh, during the March meet and speak with him about best casting methods because I think that's one of the things 3d printing will allow us is to make some really nice molds with mold separations built as part of the 3d model uh, so that we can make it as easy for uh, Bob because there's absolutely no reason why not to to deal with this the other thing that we get to deal with is the percentage of shrinkage um, makes this really easy to deal with in uh, 3d printing is I can just upscale for two and a half to three percent depending on what we're casting in uh, brass bronze tin zinc um, they all have slightly different uh, shrinkages and uh, we can just adjust that right in the 3d model um, so uh, can't say enough thank you to Peter uh, for playing around with my stuff um, and uh, showing me what can be done and uh, very cool uh, just amazed can't say can't say anything more it's it's been really fun uh, this stuff's just really neat so